Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this beautiful Thursday, September 5th, 2024. It is 4 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. I want to praise God right now just for everything, all his grace, mercy, love, his wisdom, his guidance, his protection. Guys, we could go on and on, but I'm going to try to keep today's video less than 15 minutes. And we went from five minutes the other day when I was having a spiritual attack to almost 12 minutes yesterday. See the difference, guys, that, that, that spiritual that spiritual battle we're in. But I praise God for every single one of you, and I thank you guys for joining. I want to give a real quick shout-out to a friend of ours who's been commenting here in the past day. You know who I'm, you know I'm talking about. Just sent a comment about, you know, sin, basically about sin. Don't want to sin anymore, God. Understand, a lot of churches will say, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Probably everybody watching this video has said that or still says that on Sunday. My opinion, guys, and a lot of people will believe, will agree with me, and the Bible will back this up. We are no longer sinners. The Bible says, while we were, we were, which is past tense, dead in our trans transgressions, our trespasses, while we were dead in those, Christ loved us and died for us. Guys, we were sinners, but I've been saved by grace. That's what we need to say. Can't say, oh, I'm just a sinner. No, guys, when you say I'm a sinner, you're calling Jesus Christ a sinner. People are like, oh, Todd, now don't be, guys, Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I who live. It is no, if you have totally been born again and given your life to Christ, it is Christ living in you and through you for the glory of God. And for you to continue to say, I'm a sinner, you're calling Jesus a sinner, guys. And I know there's a lot of pastors that will disagree and argue with me. But guess what? I'm not going to argue back. I just know for a fact what the word of God says. You're born again. Do we mess up? Yes, we do. These bodies, these vessels. Again, folks, body, soul, and spirit. Three parts. Our spirit man is perfect. We've got the exact same spirit as Jesus Christ. These bodies will never, ever be perfect. They will mess up every single day because of the sin nature that's in them. And our soul is basically a coin flip every day. Is our soul going to side with our spirit man or with our body? And when the soul sides with the body, that's when we, quote unquote, do the sins in the eyes of the Lord. But that's just this vessel, guys. We could go on and on. I would encourage you to read Romans chapter seven. If you got questions about why do I keep messing up, understand it's not you. It's the unwelcome intruder of sin in your flesh. And then I'm also going to add a highlighted link from gotquestions.org. It's got a lot of scripture, a lot of one liners in there, a lot of scriptures that will really help you understand, folks. And me personally, for me to say I'm a sinner means that Jesus Christ did not get on that cross for me. And I cannot do that. I will not do that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Again, thank you for joining today's title. Content in everything. In everything. Uh, and here we go. There's that big word. Not for, but in. In all things give thanks. Content in everything. Our scriptures... Our, our lead off is James 5.11 and Hebrews 12.7. Folks, I think I got James 5, like 9 through 11 highlighted. I'm not sure. So that's going to be highlighted. Please get that medicine in you. And then if you're curious, you want to read some more, read that highlighted link explaining about born again and, and the whole situation with sin. I, we can go on for hours about that. Just have the Holy Spirit place that conviction on you. And once you're born again, it's, it's not you, folks. It's not you. So these two scriptures, the word of God says this. See, we count as blessed those who have endured. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons and daughters. Amen. And we have got a one, two, three, four, four little mini segments here. Uh, guys, the first part, it must come out of a devotional strictly for the, I'm going to say the female species of man. You know, we haven't said it in a while. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Man is male and female. So for the females, I'm just going to read it the way it's written, guys. It's too hard to try to say sons and daughters, he or she. No, I mean, no, we ain't going to that whole pronoun. No, we're not doing that. Let me just read it the way it's written. Amen. How does a woman stay content? And man, guys, the male of the species, just put your name in here. You know how to do that by now. Just let the Holy Spirit translate it for you. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches you anyway. How does a woman stay content no matter what comes her way? She is not afraid of those troubles God sends her way. Eh, folks, I cannot agree with that. God does not send us trouble. 
I got a problem with that, folks. God does not do that. And while we're on it, you know, and it's it's in Job. I think we read Job is in our lead off first. They talk about Job in there. Guys, you've heard, as many of you said, it, the, good, the good Lord giveth, the good Lord taketh away. That is one time in Job, and Job says that. Guys, understand, God does not take away. He is a giving, loving father. He makes it crystal clear what will happen if you walk down this path. And if you read Job, where that quote came from, the good Lord giveth and the good Lord taketh away, read that. That was Satan doing all that to Job. That was not God. God allowed it, but God did not do it. God did not cause it. God does not bring troubles our way. He will get us through them, though. She realizes they will only make her stronger and her faith true. That's why God allows these trials to get you stronger. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't give them to us, folks. Best of all, she knows that God will be with her and will take care of her through it all. Absolutely. That in the midst of troubles, she will find him calm, his calm. And at the end of troubles, she will raise no other words on her lips, but those of praise. And I'm going to add to that too. And there better be praise on your lips the whole time you're going through it. Praise before, praise during, praise after. Hallelujah. Got a little poem here by William Cowper. Trials must and will be fall. They're going to happen, folks. John 1633, I believe. That, well, let me just stick with it. This devotional, but with humble faith to see love inscribed upon them all. This is happiness to me. Growing pains, folks. This stuff is gonna happen. Guess what? If we don't have trials and tribulations and we're living the perfect, happy life, guess what? Then we're home. Then we're then we're home with the Father. But as long as we're in this earth and not of it. This stuff is going to happen because Satan is the ruler of this world. The Bible is crystal clear, folks. Uh, I've got a paragraph here by Miguel de Molinos. Be not afraid of those trials which God may see fit to send upon thee. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Miguel, and I'm sorry whoever wrote that. God doesn't send us trials. He doesn't. He allows them. There's a big difference, a big difference. It is with the wind and the storm of tribulation that God separates the true wheat from the chaff. Amen. Always remember, therefore, that God comes to thee in thy sorrows as really as in as in thy joys. He's there for all of it, folks. He lays low and he builds up. Thou wilt find thyself far from perfection if thou dost not find God in everything. You got to find God in everything. Here we go again, guys. In, in all things, give thanks. In all things, be content. With God, all things are possible. Guys, I, I, I'm, I understand what's trying to be said here, but please, please, please don't think that God is going to purposely send a trial your way. But man, please don't believe that. Just don't believe it. I, I know there's people out there right now totally disagreeing with me, and that, that's, that's okay. If that's what God's put, if God is telling you, I'm the kind of father that's going to send this crap your way because you've been bad and I'm still a I'm still a judgmental and a a, a nasty father is just gonna, man guys I'm not going there praise God for what he's put on my heart and then Robert Lighton writes this God hath provided a sweet and quiet life for all his children that's more like it could they improve and use it a calm and firm conviction in all the storms and troubles that are about them, however things go, to find content and be careful for nothing. That praise God for that closing paragraph. Again, guys, we could go on and on, but I'm just going to leave with that. Know that is, you are no longer a sinner. Yeah, you're going to mess up because of these bodies. There's so much in the Bible, guys. Google it. What does the Bible say about no longer a sinner? That, uh, again, Romans chapter seven, call it the doo-wop chapter. Why do I do what I don't want to do? And I don't do what I want to do. It's the unwelcome intruder. And guys, and please understand the good Lord giveth and the good Lord giveth some more and the good Lord keep on giving. He does not take away. It's because of sin, because of Satan, because of his demons, the workers of iniquity and darkness and rulers of this wicked age that we fall into that trap. We, we are the ones that give it away. Me and my brother say it all the time. 
God does not send people to hell. It's our choices that do. Amen. We're leaving on that because I'm on a rampage. I can keep on going. It feels like it's been a half an hour. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for joining. Please click on those two highlighted links, especially the scripture, please. And we'll see what the Lord says tomorrow. I love you guys.